my salvation ain't complete until I get my identity, my authority, and my inheritance. I ain't going to let you quit. Until you get your identity, your authority, and your inheritance. And in order to understand it, you've got to go spiritual. Spiritual. That phrase, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand, far above. <laughs> Jesus is so far above principalities and powers and might and dominion. And Paul just got tired of naming stuff and he just said, and every name that is not. In other words, if you can name it, he's over it. If it's in this realm, he's over it. Because the resurrection was the greatest display of God's power ever released on the planet when it raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at his own right hand, far above principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named. And in case you don't understand the, the, the fullness of what we're talking about, he says, and I'm not talking about in some far off planet. He says, I'm talking about in this age and that which is to come. You have to understand when Jesus came out of the grave, he declared all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Woo! That means I got it all in both realms, in heaven and on earth. And then Paul tells us he got it in one more realm, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and earth and beneath the earth, which means there's not a realm that he's not over. And I was shouting, reading that one day, and the Spirit of the Lord told me, say, that's your problem right there. That's your problem. That's your problem, Isaac. That's the problem with my church. That's the problem with you. I say, talk to me, Lord. He says, keep reading. <laughs> and you who were dead in trespasses and sins, have he quickened us together? I'm going to say it slow. And you, this is what he's trying to get the Ephesians church to understand. And this is what I'm trying to get you to understand tonight. And I'm still trying to understand it myself. And you have he quickened and made us alive together. And raised us up together. And made us sit together. In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. I want to ask you something and it's not a trick question. What does together mean in New Jersey? Does it mean the same that it means in Hebrew? 
That means along with. That means in connection with. That means joined to. If you are together, it is impossible for you to have something somebody else does not have if you two are together. And he said, that's where y'all have been stuck. Y'all have been shouting about where I'm seated. When my assignment is to reveal to you, you seated right here with me. You see? You see right there? Put your hand on your head. See, that's when, whenever you need help, you just lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, help my head. Because just a few minutes ago, when I was talking about him being raised from the dead, you were shouting amen. Just a few minutes ago, when I talked about him being far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that was named, you were shouting amen. But when I said, and he raised you up right with him. Uh-oh, which means Jesus gave me his position. Oh, let me work this for just a minute. See, this is why the Spirit of God had me write this book. Because what we have not understood and fully grasped as the church is that you and I are functioning in a dimension we are not even aware of. What I'm about to tell you for the next 20 minutes ain't something that's going to happen to you. I'm about to tell you something that has already happened, and tonight you just going to act like it. What the Lord revealed to me is he says, Isaac, you didn't understand totally what happened to you in the resurrection. You didn't understand what happened. And he said, the reason is, because most ministers of the previous generation, they meant well. God bless their heart. They did well. They didn't teach us anything wrong. They just didn't teach us enough. They stopped. And I don't know why they stopped. Why did we stop? He says they basically only preach salvation from a conditional standpoint. That I forgave your sins. I washed them away. I gave you my righteousness. I went to the cross for you so that you could be saved. So that you could be born again. First of all, they didn't even explain what that meant. Because most of us thought basically that meant we just got fire insurance. In other words, they majored on the fact that we don't have to go to hell. That was what it was about. And that's why most of us got saved, because we didn't want to go to hell. <laughs> oh, don't want to go to hell. Don't want to go to hell. That's why when that preacher started talking about hell, I came on down to the altar, because I ain't trying to go to hell. And they taught us the benefits of what we received would not be fully embraced, or neither could we walk in it until we left here. And they called that eternal life. 